Now that's their summer uniforms of those soldiers and in Indian. In the winter time, the Indian puts on a blanket and the soldiers would have another coat. The British soldier in red would have a red coat, the French soldier. Several days later, Washington Seventy yards distance from the ship, they fired a musket ball. It goes through here. It goes through here. It goes through the oak plank on the door. It's sticking in the log, top log in the back. You can go in and see it if you like. Now that was. Uh, yeah, they do come through. <laughs> that was uh, just a sample. Depot, and out of necessity, when they heard the French were coming to attack them, they came back to this place here at the Great Meadows. In other words, they had built this place before. Before. Okay. This is. This they built this to store their supplies in to protect it from the rain, and they encamped in the meadow where they had tents, and they continued cutting the road to the westward. Then, out of necessity, they came back here and were too tired to go any further. And this is where uh, the French came. And uh, the battle ensued and lasted all day long. And uh, around midnight in this shed, they came to an agreement. And uh, both sides were ready to get out of here. They were out of supplies, munitions were all, or the gunpowder was all wet. Um, so both sides wanted to go home and this is what they came to an agreement of. Cutting this road, uh, Washington was constantly informed that French parties are out looking for him. So he assumes they're gonna make an attack on him. He arrives here at the Great Meadows. As soon as he arrives, he's informed the Indians have found the French party nearby. So he's gonna make the first strike. He's not gonna wait for him to come here. So he takes the available men. Uh, he has 70 odd already looking for the French. So he takes 40 and he leaves the remainder here. And with the Indians, uh, they find Jamonville in this small glen, which is not far from here. And uh, they travel through a rain all night. And at the first light in the morning, they attack Jamonville's party. About 10 of them are killed, and the rest are taken prisoner and they're brought back here. Then they are sent to Virginia under escort as prisoners, and that's where they remain. So in other words, this place here was a supply depot. Right. Uh, was it was used for a number of years, probably, over different no. camp. Okay. It was, it was 
was only up. Uh, let's see, it was only up a month. Okay. Then it was burned, and it was never reconstructed. Well, that Jamonville skirmish, did that have any repercussions? And uh, well, the French yeah. used it politically to say the English provoked a war. And uh, Washington, that, he's in command, so he had to take the heat. But it was the Indians who killed Jamonville. And capitulation written by the French commandant and signed by Colonel Washington and McKay. And at the time, the paper was all wet from the rain, and the ink is all blotted. It was very difficult to read. The original was in a museum in Quebec. Okay, as a uh, terms of the capitulation, both sides could uh, uh, say things against the other that the other broke. Um, as far as the French, they said that Washington uh, broke it by coming with Braddock, which would be before a year, which is explained in the capitulation. Uh, the English could say that Villiers did not stop the Indians from harassing the troops and to breaking in their baggage, destroying the medicines, and so on, which they were to do. So both sides had legitimate gripes about the capitulation prisoners were never returned. That is one, the last article in the capitulation. Do you know what happened to the prisoners? Did they know or died yeah, or what? The uh, regular foot soldiers, they were sent back to England the following year as prisoners. One officer was kept here, La Force. Uh, he was kept in Virginia in prison after he tried to escape. He was confined. He was given freedom to walk around Williamsburg and wherever he was, then once he tried, attempted to make his escape, he was confined. And he stayed there for the remainder of the war. He was a very astute French officer, and they knew his value, and that's one of the reasons why they kept him in captivity. Um, most of the men wore their civilian clothing. They were promised uniforms, but they probably had not come up. Um, there were 30 shirts sent up, and uh, the men were willing to pay for their own uniforms out of their pay, but uh, they just didn't have time to make them. So most of them were wearing civilian clothing. Okay, they were issued weapons.
gun rack. We go here. Go here. Don't touch it, Mike. Mm -hmm. He handles that fire. This was one of those hickeys that they used to mm -hmm. write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Later, Mike. Later. 